Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to the Being Beautifully Honest podcast and channel. For those of you who are listening to this, whatever platforms you're listening to this on, I just want to let you know I really appreciate it. And for those of you who are subscribed, thank you so much for being a subscriber. If you are not subscribed yet, please do go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you're listening to this on YouTube while you're at it, go ahead and hit that like button. It's like walking into the room, into the room. <laughs> hitting that light switch. It's just going to go ahead and brighten up the place. And let's get into this conversation slash reality chat. All right, guys. So it's being reported that Quad from Married to Medicine allegedly has been let go. And I just wanted to talk briefly about this. And it's not to gloat. It's not to chair. It's not to celebrate at all because I never like to hear about anyone, unless it's Martel, <laughs> being let go from what they call their job because these people being on these reality shows at this point, it's their job because I don't know what else she does for a living. I know she used to be on that show years ago called Sister Circle that used to come on TV One, but that was canceled years ago. And as far as whatever else she has been doing, I don't know. I don't follow her on social media, so I don't know what else she does for a living besides being on Married to Medicine. But it's being reported that she allegedly has been let go. And this is what I wanted to talk about with regards to that situation, because Dr. Gregory, he, well, he's her ex-husband. He just recently got married and congratulations to him and his new wife. But if you watched Married to Medicine, okay, she never really looked to me and to a lot of people like she was really into him. And there are a lot of people who felt like Dr. G or Dr. Gregory was weird. And, you know, a lot of people made fun of his high pitched voice. Listen, not every man, every man (laughs) and not all men have low pitched voices. Uh, Barry White bass voices. So like not every man has just the the low monotone (laughs) voice. Some men, they have higher pitched voices, just like not every female has a high pitched voice. Some females have low pitched voices. It's just the way things shake out. But it was funny. And when they would have Dr. G speeding off in that little Mini Cooper that he was driving and they would like add a little bit of extra spin to the wheels and have it speeding (laughs) off from driving off from the house when he and Quad were getting into it. It was funny, but I can't imagine that the household was a very fun one to be in. But it looked like Quad, she put on appearances for the sake of the camera and it definitely did help her to be a part of the show, of which Mariah Huck helped her to be on. And so the reason why I wanted to even have this discussion is not to report the news, but I just wanted to say, I believe, this is my personal opinion, that Mariah Huck is somewhere smiling right now to hear this news because this is a show that Mariah created. She sued Bravo and the executives of NBC Universal, I believe, because she was pretty much pushed out of being on the show. But she still had her executive producer credit. And some people say, oh, it's just a title. It doesn't really mean anything. But she actually created the show. And I believe as much as people may have disliked her or didn't care for her, wasn't fond of her. I like Mariah. It was her creation. And I always felt like it was extremely disrespectful. Not for the executives, because listen, they're going to do what they do they're capitalists, they're out to make the most and pay the least. So they do that type of stuff. It's not okay. I'm not saying that it was cool, but you really can't expect much from them more than that. But I always felt that it was extremely disrespectful for the ladies, all of them, from Quad to Dr. Simone, uh, Dr. Um, What's her face? Dr. Jackie, especially Dr. Heavenly. I mean, you know, she and Dr. Heavenly did not get along. And, you know, Toya, to an extent, I felt like they did not root for her because they had their own little personal qualms with her. But if it were not for her, they would not have even been on the show. So I just always felt like, I'm not saying that they should have bowed down to her feet and worshipped her because some people may feel like, well, that's what she was expecting and that's why they didn't give it to her. 
not saying he had to do that, but I don't feel that Dr. Jackie ever really liked Mariah. And, you know, I just felt like they didn't stand up for her or root for her to be a part of the show. And I just always felt that that was disrespectful because if it were not for the show, most of us wouldn't know who they were. Yeah, Dr. Jackie was successful and she was doing her thing in her private practice, but that show has definitely helped her to grow. And all honesty and all honesty, yeah, she'll continue to be on the show. But to me, I feel like for what purpose? Because she really brings nothing to it, but her practice. And I think that's cool, but for the environment of Bravo, which is drama entertainment, Dr. Jackie brings none of that. It's just about her business. I think that's an amazing thing for like We TV in a way, or definitely TLC. You've got Dr. Pimple Popper on TLC. Why not get your own show and be on a network like that if you don't want to really share anything about your personal life? Because we know that her husband cheated on her several years ago, and that was very embarrassing for her. And she never really even wanted to share much where that was concerned. She just wanted to be like this rock, this fortress that didn't show much emotion. And so I don't think it really helped people to really relate with her that may have been going through something similar or may have gone through something similar. I'm not saying that she had to be like Melody from Love and Marriage Huntsville, but my God, Melody has a cult following because I feel that so many people have related to what Melody experienced with the narcissist of the man that she was married to, Martel. So I believe that if Dr. Jackie was a bit more vulnerable it would have allowed more people to really connect and relate with her. But because she's not a probable character, people don't really dislike her. They're just kind of, you know, whatever when it comes to her. And that's why with Dr. Heavenly, people either love her or hate her. There may be some in-betweens, but there's not much of the in-betweens with her. So with the quad uh, reportedly, allegedly, being fired from married to medicine. In my opinion, I really feel like it was her kind of shooting herself in the foot because she was just doing the most. And on that last season, when she had the holiday party at her house and she was up on the balcony and she was speaking down from the balcony to all of the guests and she was throwing shade and making comments about, you know, how she did this on her own. Nobody helped her. And for those who didn't believe in her and whatever, and it's like, girl, you bought a house and you didn't pay for it cash. So, I mean, you're paying a mortgage and God forbid you can't afford to pay the mortgage anymore. You're either going to sell it or it's going to go into foreclosure. So that's really nothing to brag about. But she was throwing shade at Toya and, you know, other people that were there and maybe people who were watching the show. And it's just now to see that she's not going to be a part of the show anymore. Allegedly, again, things could change. I don't know. But right now they're saying that there's no contract signed and they've already started filming I just believe that she got a big head. She probably was asking for way too much because if Dr. Gregory and his new wife are going to be on the show, which in all honesty, I feel he deserves. I really do because if it were not for Dr. Gregory, Quad would have not been on the show because when Married to Medicine began, it was about doctors that were females and doctors' wives. So you had... You had Quad, who was married to Dr. Gregory, who Mariah pitched her for it. It was Mariah's show, and she was married to a doctor. You had Dr. Jackie, who is a doctor, and you had Dr. Simone, who is a doctor. And I believe she pitched for Dr. Heavenly for the first season, but she did not make the cut. But she got on the second season. And Dr. Heavenly is a uh, a double, you know, duo because she's a doctor, well, a dentist, which is a doctor of dental medicine. And her husband is a doctor. He's a pain specialist. And then you've got Toya, who's married to an ER doctor. And Quad has been really nasty to Toya. I didn't really care for Toya in the beginning, but I started to get more of a soft heart towards her because it's just a lot, excuse me, to be in that position of being judged and critiqued. And yeah, I mean, people can say, well, if it were not for... 
Dr. Eugene's money, she wouldn't be with him. Yeah, you know, but there's a lot of people <laughs> who are in similar positions, but that doesn't mean that she doesn't love her husband. I do believe she loves her husband and they are friends and they have, you know, a beautiful family. She just is a very materialistic person and that is shown, but that's one of her downfalls and that has been something that they showcased throughout the several seasons of them constantly moving and trying to make things work with the houses, renting, buying, building, all those other things. Say what you want, but she was putting it out there and it was real. And Dr. Quad, not Lord, not Dr. Quad. (laughs) Quad was definitely being very sarcastic towards Dr. Eugene and Toya In last season, alleging that Toya had something to do with the break-ins that were happening at Anila's and her husband's home. How horrible to, to do something like that. And she did it, she says, from a space of hurt. But to allege someone committed crimes? Come on now. So after those things happening and just her being on the show for all of these seasons, just kind of being weird, her being the only single one with all of these married couples going on couples trips, that just didn't make any sense to me. And even when Toya brought it up several seasons ago about, well, look, Quad may still be a part of the friend group and we may be filming the show and we're going to go on these couples trips But I don't think that if you're single, you should be going on the couple's trips. Quad was fighting for her right to be a part of the group trips with the couples. And I felt like that was weird too. Some people were trying to say, well, Toya was trying to ice Quad out because she didn't want her to be on the show anymore. She never said that. She just was saying, I don't think she should be coming to couple's trips. And I agreed. Tell me if you would be married or dating someone and you are going on a couple's trip with other couples and then you had a single friend who's going to go on the couple's trip with all of the couples and they're the only one there alone like that's being the third wheel or the fifth wheel it just does not even out so with all of those things being said quad no longer being a part of the show i feel that it's a bit of irony definitely a little bit of karma and just a cautionary tale of being careful about how you carry yourself and being so prideful because I just felt that her ego and the big head, how she was acting at BravoCon and just things that were said and done, I just felt like her ego just really got the best of her. And I I really wish her nothing but the best in the capacity that fits her. But I just don't believe that her being a part of Married to Medicine anymore, especially having a main role like she has had, made any sense. Be a friend if they would have allowed her to be that. And from what I've heard, that allegedly was something that was offered to her, but I just think she was demanding of more. And you have to be really careful because if it's like, well, if that money that you were getting before was okay and they're asking you to come back, maybe you should just accept it for now and prove your worth even more and then go from there. But from what I'm hearing, it sounds like she may have been demanding more because they were going to have her ex-husband on the show along with his new wife, fiance too then wife because they just got married and I think that was also being recorded I don't know if they're going to show it on the show or not but to just demand well look if I'm going to be on the show then I you know I'm going to expect to be paid this that and the other and they're like well I don't know about that maybe just come on there prove how worthy you are of being a friend of the show and maybe not saying that they would bring you back on in a main cast role but they would offer you more money to be a friend of and to be able to film more scenes and be, you know, be more seen on the show. So I don't know because they had, what's her face? Carrie, who's married to the doctor. She was in the first season of Married to Medicine and she was a bit much, but she's been, I think on the past couple of seasons, been showcased as a friend of, and she's married. (laughs) Okay. So they gave, in my opinion, Quad more than they gave her. 
in terms of consideration, I don't know if Carrie got paid or not, but I feel that she got probably something and she accepted it. I haven't heard her making any qualms about it or making waves about it. So sometimes you just have to walk in humility. I feel all times you should walk in humility and walking in humility doesn't mean that you don't showcase who you are, your accomplishments, what you have to offer and letting it be known, but there's a way about doing it. So walking in humility versus walking in pride and a huge ego, inflated ego, it it doesn't mean that being humble and having humility means that you walk with your head held down and and you don't want anyone to notice you and, you know, it's no big deal, I'm no big deal, whatever. No, you, you don't have to do that, but it's just a way you carry yourself in terms of how you handle things. And someone... Like Quad, I just feel that her ego just got way too big. And we've seen this before. I don't know if it's a curse or what, but it definitely happens a lot with these people who are on these reality shows. We've seen it with Nini. She cut off her nose to spite her face. And from what I've heard, she's trying to gain opportunities to get back into entertainment. And so far, it's not working out. Okay. So you just have to really be careful. You guys are not Halle Berry, you you know, even Halle Berry, in my opinion, even though she's won an Oscar and is considered an A-list actress, even she is not really seen as all of that at this point in time because they age people out depending on who you are in Hollywood. And Halle Berry is no Meryl Streep. And you can take that however you want to take it. So I'm just saying... These people, you have garnered notoriety, you've garnered acknowledgement, you've garnered some sense and semblance of some fame. Take that, accept it, be grateful for it, walk in humility in that, but don't get your head so big and conflated with the ego that you feel that there's just no way that these people can go on without you because trust and believe, Real Housewives of Atlanta has been going on and on and on since Nini has been gone. And some people may say it's never been the same since she's been gone. That may be true, but they're still moving on. (laughs) They haven't haven't been canceled. So you can say what you want. They're still moving forward. They're still paying the bills over there. They're still paying the housewives that are over there. They're still going on the cash trips. They're still doing what they're going to do. And then with Quad now, some people may say, well, the show's going to be boring without her. We shall see. We shall see. But either way, I just feel that it was eventually going to happen. And I'm not really surprised that it happened at this point in time, especially based on the way that she interacted last season with Dr. Eugene and Dr. Toya. Oh, Lord, Dr. Toya. (laughs) Dr. Eugene and his wife, Toya, and the allegations that she was throwing their way about them possibly having Anila and her husband's home broken into and just a number of things that, you know, she did that just made her look extremely messy. Reality TV, we have the drama, but when it comes to the mess like that, especially on Bravo, it's extremely lowbrow and... I just don't believe that she needed to be a part of it anymore. And I also felt like the, I'm going to call it this, a storyline with her and her nephew. I just feel that it was a storyline. When I found out that the mother of the child was available and around, like, why is the child living with you? And why isn't the mother living there? Like, if you have this huge house, I don't know. It To me, it just screamed storyline. I'm sorry that her, her brother lost his life and the child lost his father. Definitely a tragic thing. But the way that it was showcased it to just, to I feel, a lot of people, definitely to myself, it just came across as a storyline, a desperate storyline for the sake of garnering sympathy, showing that you've got this child that is in your guardianship care now and all of these other things like that. To me, 
I just really felt like this is all for TV. And I don't even think sometimes they even realize it because subconsciously they may feel like they are doing it for the sake of that person or for the sake of the family or whatever it is. But ultimately it is because you are on this show and you do need to have something to present to the viewing public, period. So guys, I just wanted to talk about that briefly. You can let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you so much for liking this content and subscribing. This is Beth and I'm just being beautifully honest. So until the next time, I just wanted to keep it brief, beautiful.